Hi everyone. I'm Shinsuke Fujioka from Fukuoka University, Japan. First of all, I would like to thank the SPEC members for providing me with this opportunity to give this talk. My presentation will focus on diagnostic approach to hereditary ataxic disorders. Hereditary ataxias presenting with pure cerebral ataxia generally include SCA 5, 6, 11, 26, 30, 31, and 42. The prevalence is as you can see in this table. However, it depends on geographical zone. For example, SCA 31 is common in your city. This patient is SCA 31 patients presenting with slowly progressive pure cerebral ataxia. No other neurological symptoms are accompanied. Majority of hereditary ataxic disorders present with combination of ataxia and other neurological signs including movement disorders, eye symptoms, cognitive abnormalities, pyramidal signs, neuropathy, and others. With the combination of clinical symptoms, we can narrow differential diagnosis. I will focus on hereditary ataxic disorders, which can be introduced with video presentation. These hereditary ataxic disorders, especially SCA2, 3, 17, can be accompanied by dystonia during the disease course. I will introduce you SCA2 as an example. SCA2 is characterized by progressive cerebral ataxia of some pressure. And Parkinson's and pyramidal signs can be seen in some individuals. Up to 61% of patients develop dystonia during the disease course. Case 1 shows mild jaw opening dystonia in addition to limb ataxia and tremor. Six years after the examination, she shows more severe jaw opening dystonia. Case 2 shows peripheral spasm or buccal dystonia and cervical dystonia in addition to limb and gait ataxia. In patients with cerebral ataxia accompanied by lower cranial dystonia, SA2 should be considered during the diagnostic workup. SCA17 commonly presents dystonia too. For SCA17 patients, progressive cerebral ataxia and psychiatric abnormalities are frequently initial findings that are followed by dementia, chorea, dystonia, Parkinsonism, and pyramidal signs. Dystonia seen in SCA17 include peripheral spasm, torticollis, writer's cramp, and limb dystonia. This SCA17 patient developed slowly progressive cellular ataxia followed by dementia. On examination, he showed this dialogue kinesis, dysmetria, and decomposition on finger and nose test with dystonic posturing of his hand. He had hyperreflexia and dys dysmetria and decomposition on heel knee test. And he sh showed dystonic posturing of his finger. Occurrence of dystonia in patients with slowly progressive severe ataxia and dementia should suggest SCA17 testing. I will also introduce you SCA28. SCA28 is characterized by young adult onset very slowly progressive severe ataxia. Less frequently, ptosis and ophthalmoplegia may occur as, a, as the initial findings. Extrapyramidal signs, either Parkinson's or dystonia, can be observed. 
this SCA28 patient had bilateral process and external of some pressure. He showed dystonic posturing of his neck, right shoulder, and trunk in addition to cerebral signs of both the upper and lower limbs. Testing for SCS28 should be considered in patients showing autosomal dominant ataxia syndromes with obstacle pressure and prominent dystonia. Several hereditary ataxias, especially SCA2, 3, 6, 17, can be accompanied by Parkinsonism. The hallmark of SCA12 is the presence of action tremor in the upper limbs, often mistaken for essential tremor. Cerebellar ataxia and other neurological features, such as pyramidal signs, and extrapyramidal signs may occur later in the disease course. I will introduce you an interesting SCA12 case. This SCA12 patient showed teen tremor and vertical gaze palsy. He also had resting posture and action tremor. When walking, tremor was exaggerated and blood kinesia and posture instability were evident. It is noted that SCA tremor can present with PSP-like phenotype. SCA21 causes slowly progressive cerebral ataxia, mild cognitive impairment, and postural and or resting tremor. Parkinsonism is thought to be rare in SCA21, but according to a past literature review, 65% of SCA21 patients had bradykinesia. Other Parkinsonism seen in SCA21 include rigidity and resting tremor. Parkinsonism seen in SCA21 was reported to be not responsive to levodopa. Many hereditary ataxic disorders, especially SCA8, 12, 15, and 16, 23, fragile X associated tremor ataxic syndrome, and Wilson disease, can present with tremor during the disease course. Among these, I will introduce you SCA40 first. SCA40 is very rare type and has been reported only in two families with the clinical picture introducing progressive cerebral ataxia, of sun pressure, pyramidal signs, action tremor, dementia, and Parkinsonism. This SCA40 patient shows postural tremor of her hands and side-to-side -side head tremor, as well as intention tremor in upper extremities, more severe on the right side. Finger nose test and heel knee test suggested mild dysmetry. Gait was mildly ataxic with mild difficulty performing tandem gating. Fragile X associated tremor ataxia syndrome typically present with tremor. This disorder is characterized by late onset 
progressive cerebral ataxia and intention tremor, followed by cognitive impairment. Psychiatric disorders such as autism are also relatively common. But dementia, Parkinsonism, and neuropathy are rare. This fragile X associated tremor ataxia syndrome patient presented with posture and action tremor and cerebral ataxia. No Parkinsonism or cognitive impairment were noted. This symptom were progressive and asymmetrical, worse on the right side. He did not wear on tandem gait, but his symptoms were reported to be ameliorated by DBS therapy. Combination of intentional tremor and progressive cerebral ataxia implicates fragile X associated tremor as ataxia syndrome. Wilson disease, which is a disorder of kappa metabolism that can present with hepatic, neurologic, or psychiatric dis disturbances, or a combination of these. Neurological uh, presentations include progressive cerebral ataxia, tremor, chorea, and chorea atosis and dystonia. Psychiatric disturbance including depression, neurotropic behaviors, personality change, and occasionally intellectual disorientation can be seen. A wing beating tremor is typical of Wilson disease. It is characterized by a low frequency, high amplitude, posture induced proximal arm tremor, elicited by sustained abduction of the arms with flexed elbow and palms facing downward. Zolpidem was reported to be effective for the wing beating tremor like this patient. But it is noted that wing beating tremor were reported in other neurological disorders such as Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease. Tremor is thought to be rare in SCA35, but SCA35 can present with variety of tremor. Early clinical features of SCA35 is slowly progressive cerebral ataxia, and additional features include behavioral signs, dystonia, and tremor, including action, intention, and posture tremor. This SCA35 patient showed postural and kinetic tremor of his both hands. The tremor was jerky and its amplitude varied. Mild dysmetria of the arm was evident. When writing, he presented with tremor and distinct posture of his hand, fingers. He had pyramidal signs, but no Parkinsonism was seen. Brain MRI showed atrophy of several hemispheres. Previous reports proved that district tremor in the absence of clear several signs can be seen in SC35 patients and be used uh, as a clue to its diagnosis when at cerebral atrophy is found. Several hereditary ataxic disorders, especially DRPLA, SCA17, can develop chorea during the disease course. DRPLA can be divided into two subgroups, juvenile onset, adult onset. Juvenile onset DRPLA patients mainly present with epilepsy, rigidity, and intellectual disability. Epilepsy is common, too. 
Adult long chest DRPLA patients mainly shows ataxia, choreo ketosis, and dementia, often difficult to differentiate from Huntington disease. Epilepsy is uncommon, especially patients with onset after age of 40. This juvenile onset DRPLA patients developed walking difficulty at age 14 years, and she had frequently seizure attacks since she was 28 years. At age 28, she developed recurrent generalized tonic-chronic seizures and myoclonus refracted to anti-epileptic drugs. She developed choreoatos at age 29. Two years later, she could no longer walk independently due to posture instability caused by ataxic gait. Concurrently, she presented with mild cognitive impairment. It is noted that clinical phenotype vary even within the same family, depending on the number of CAG repeat expansion. Cerebral tendinous xanthoma is a lipid stretch disease characterized by infantile onset diarrhea, childhood onset cataract, adolescent to young adult onset tendon xanthomas, and adult onset progressive neurologic dysfunction, including dementia, psychiatric disturbance, pyramidal and or cerebral signs, dystonia, atypical Parkinsonism, peripheral neuropathy, and seizures. Case 1 showed bilateral postural myocron jerks of the upper limbs. Dystonic posture with flexion of the fingers and abduction of the hands. Case 4 showed slight postural myoclonus and dystonic posture with extension of light third fingers and then dystonia of the thumbs. Case 5 showed myoclonic jerks of the left hand and dystonic posture with flexion of abduction of fifth finger and intermediate flexion of the thumb. The diagnosis of CTX should be considered in patients with distal myoclonus with mild dystonia. Ophthalmoplasia can be seen in several hereditary ataxic disorders including Neiman pick disease type C. Based on the age at onset, NPC is categorized into five subgroups, parental, per perinatal, early infant, late infantile, juvenile, and adolescents or adults. Adolescents and adult NPC may present predominantly with apparent early onset dementia or psychiatric manifestations. However, careful ex examination usually identifies typical neurological signs such as cerebral ataxia, vertical supranuclear gaze palsy, dystonia, catalepsy, and sometimes seizure. This NPC patient developed gradually progressive gait ataxia at age 55. Three years later, he started dropped things due to myoclonic jerks involving the trunk and upper extremities. On examinations, he had dysarthria, dis reduced vertical gaze, marked gait ataxia with milder appendicular ataxia, and dysdiadokinase. Generalized myoclonic jerks were present, predominantly involving the upper extremity on posture maintenance. 
but there's no features suggestive of Parkinsonism. Also, NPC usually affects infants or young other adolescents. It should be considered in the differential diagnosis of vertical supranuclear gaze palsy, regardless of age at presentation. Many hereditary ataxic disorders, including CoQ10 deficiency, present with dementia. CoQ10 deficiency typically causes combination of progressive severe ataxia and dementia and seizure. Myocrons and tremorous involuntary movement can also be seen. This CoQ10 deficiency patient developed gait disturbance at age 12 years old and gradual cognitive decline. He experienced generalized seizure several times and has been treated with anti-epileptic drug. On examination, he showed this diadokinesis, this material and decomposition on finger nose tests with myocardial jerk. Also, this material and decomposition on hearing test. He also has a pyramidal signs. Gait was unsteady and ataxic. CoQ10 deficiency is rare, thus after exclusion of common hereditary ataxic disorders in patients with combination of ataxia and dementia, CoQ10 deficiency should be considered for additional differential diagnosis. Pyramidal signs can be seen in many hereditary ataxic disorders. Alsax is clinically characterized by a progressive cerebral ataxia, peripheral neuropathy, and spasticity. Pescabes can be seen in approximately 60% of patients. This Alsax patient shows gait ataxia. and did not wear on tandem gait. Deep tendon reflex was exaggerated. He also showed pescapes. The combination of severe ataxia, hyperreflexia, and pescapes, as well as severe atrophy with T2-weighted linear hypointensity in the pons on brain MRI strongly suggests RSAX. Sensory neuropathy can be seen in several hereditary ataxic disorders such as gerstrommann strassler schenker disease. Classical initial phenotype is ataxia with leg alflexia for GSS. Leg Alreflexia can be seen in approximately 80% of GSS patients. Dysesthesia is common in patients with the alreflexia. Patients develop cognitive impairment several years after the onset and then rapidly progress and finally become akinetic mutism. This GSS patient showed impaired smooth parcel eye movement. Finger nose test showed mild dysmetoria. He did not show any abnormal involuntary movement. On repetitive arm uh, movement, the movement of his left arm was a little bit poor. Heel knee tests showed mild decomposition. His gait is unsteady, especially when he turned. 
and tandem gait was so unstable. Combination of progressive severe ataxia and paresthesia or leg alphalexia implicates this disorder. Cerebral ataxia, neuropathy, and vestibular alephlexia syndrome present with sensory neuropathy too. Progressive cerebral ataxia, bilateral vestibular hypofunction, and a somatic sensory deficit are three cardinal features of this disorder. And dysphagia, cough, autonomic dysfunction, somatic allodynia, and dysesthesia can be also seen in this disorder. This is take-home message. Hereditary ataxia can be divided into two subgroups, pure ataxic disorders, ataxic disorders with comb combined other neurological signs. Identification of some accompanying signs are useful to diagnose hereditary ataxic disorders. Thank you so much for your attention.